notorious, deadly, true Mongols. These are just some of the words the media has used to describe one of New Zealand's most feared gangs, the Mongol mob. Known for fatal assaults, high-end drug trafficking and gruesome murders. And the Mongol mob have been known this way since their beginnings in the 60s. But after further research, I came across Bronson, a leader of the Wairo Mongol mob chapter. Wairo is a small coastal town in New Zealand. It's known for its high crime and heavy drug use. And the Wairo Mongol mob is one of New Zealand's most feared chapters. But Bronson is changing that through his social media where he shows a side of the gang that not many people would expect to see. Bronson is showing the changes his chapter is making to change the mindset of his gang members for the better and, as importantly, heal the community of Wairu. I wanted to find out just how much good a feared gang can really do to make a difference in their community. Before we get into a video, I want to do a big shout out to our sponsor, Rolexo. Now, I've noticed recently a lot more people gamble online. What's crazy is the amount of rigged casinos out there. So if you want to gamble with a casino that is legit, Rolexo is the place to go. It's the most trusted site on the net. It is the easiest platform to instantly withdraw money. They have one of the highest RTP percents and a great bonus system too. So fams, use the link below in the description and use the promo code ENJOY to increase your deposit to 100%. Best of luck everyone, but most importantly, gamble responsibly. Back to the video. So Mitch and I went to Wairo to spend the day with Bronson and some of his members to answer our questions and see what is really going on. Morena te whanau, it is bright and early here in Wairo. Uh, we've just made it down here to the Wairo Community Centre. Uh, we're heading up to the gym right now to catch up with a few of the boys for an early morning workout, so let's go see how that goes. Thank you for having us this morning, brothers. What are we doing today, boys? We all? We all, we all. We all, we all. I'm gonna jump on with you today, brothers. Thank you for having me, man. Good morning. <laughs> let's go, brothers. Where if he's ain't on the old strong man agenda, oh, right? No, no, because finally we're here, we're following old Cap today. <laughs> Cap's leading us in food. Burpees. Burpees, brother. Together. Touch three, two, one. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, good morning, brothers. Holy. Open, see, see my frame's changing? Yeah. Well, bam, this is our cheating, cousin. Hey, waka ama. <laughs> see? Hold this from movement now. Ooh, my brothers. Beautiful brother. Yeah? Yeah. All agree, it's just 270. All right, friends. I want to say a number and it's only 150. <laughs> 270, finally, 270. Yeah. Oh, My cuz, how does that all transfer over? To what you're doing fitness is key but it's like you guys hold each other accountable yeah to make sure that the brother no matter where he is whether he's here whether he's down the bay wherever he is that he hits that target like i said earlier we're trying to implement those healthy habits into our lifestyles 
because it, it ties over into everything else that we want to do and that accountability, you know, sort of like that pack mentality. Yep. We've utilised that pack mentality to go rob people and all that in the past, yep. but now we're utilising that same mentality with healthy habits instead of getting together to plot a, f***ing, a crime, you know, we're getting together to plot how we're going to move forward in a positive way. If I reflect on the five years since I've been out of jail, it was the run. Every time I was consistent with my running, it just flowed into a more of a healthy routine, bro. So I look at all the things that sort of kept me on track and on the straight and narrow, and I, then I implement them with all the boys and say, brother, let's do this running. It gets the feel-good endorphins flowing throughout the body. And when you run over about 3Ks, brother, you just get out of your head, bro. You've got to sort of tune into the body. And a lot of the boys just overthink, you know, the lifestyle out here, we're caught up in, the, in thinking, bro, compulsive thinking. So the running has been the best thing for that in my eyes, brother. So it must be rewarding for you as a leader to see these young people, one, sticking to it, but yeah. also improving themselves physically and mentally, bro. How is that for you? I actually feel like that's my purpose, brother. You know, they don't need to learn the unless the way that I learned through years in jail and just a lot of, bro, I learned a lot of valuable lessons through some stupid mistakes and they don't need to make those stupid mistakes, eh, you know? That's what a, a teacher or a guide's all about, eh, brother, you know? I've walked through this fucking jungle and had all the slips, trips and falls you can have and now I've found a better path and I'll show you the way. Yeah, brother, and when I see these young fellas, like, bro, wouldn't you ever talk with the bro? They, they was brought up in foster care since he was seven years old, ran away from all the foster homes and shit. You know, and then a lot of the young fellas, they come and they fall off the waka, but I tell them my doors are always open. The kaupapa here is strong. Yeah. The respect is strong, but the mahi in here is strong. Mm. And that's key, my bro. Yeah, brother. Appreciate you, brother. Much love, brother. I appreciate you, my brother, for the CG. No, no, oh, no. Appreciate you. The media has betrayed this place in a way, cuz, that the world knows. Yeah. But yeah. you tell me and the Fano bro, through your eyes, bro, why do Brother, through my eyes, I think for me just I've been walking the street my entire life, bro. So I just only have good memories. Mm. You now I have memories of fights in that all up up here, but that happens in every town. Mm. Eh? Mm. Yes, the stuff that the media has portrayed in the eighties that that stuff did happen. But it is now two thousand and twenty four, brother. Mm. For me when I'm asked about what well, Waddles, it's just love, brother. Mm. Oh. Cheers, yeah, my brothers. Cheers, my brothers. Cheers, yeah. hey, yeah, yeah. my brother. How are you, my bro? Cheers, yeah, yeah, my, my brother. The community know you and they see you. Yeah. And they welcome you with, with open arms, brother. It's beautiful to see. People there, through that camera there, guys, don't understand the money you guys carry, the respect you carry, not only for yourselves, but for your people, your community, bro. It's amazing, brother. Yeah, well, that's the thing, eh, hey, brother? Like, I love my community. We do, and I've often taught that by our seniors, mm. you know, and our national presidents, you know, mm. that we look after our people. When things are happening in the town, it's up to us to put a stop to things. Yep. You know, that's why we're doing things are entirely different, brother. We mm. we now have communication with the police and that to minimise wow. gang harm and all that and the impact that it has on the community. You know, Shoot. that's why we can come to places like this and yeah, sit yeah, amongst, yeah. amongst the people in there, bro. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Be, just be welcome, brother. You know, this is a, this is the hangout right here, bro. Man, brother. This is this is a cool place. Yeah. That's awesome, bro. After our kai, we sat down with one of the members, Hendrix, to hear his story. Who we're doing with, my brother? Hinari, my brother. Hinari, brother, Hinari. Can you share with us a little bit of a story about you, my brother, you know, where you from, where you grew up, Chris, and how yeah, you came brother. to Waitu? Um, I'm from here, I'm from Waitu. Yeah, yeah. I had like, it started my life, it was, it was mean, and then, um, yeah, I started, my parents started not getting along and yep. stuff, so I ended up being taken away from SIS. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, at a young age anyway, and then I was just moving around, I was living down south. Um, just living everywhere in the bay. Mm. When I was growing up in SIFS, all I wanted to do was just run away back mm. to my parents. Mm. So yeah, that's why I got moved around a lot, because the people that I was staying with couldn't handle me. Because yep. all I was doing was just trying to run back to my parents. Yep. I ended up moving back when, when I jumped on board with Bronny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, we all met up with him and yeah, we had a talk and he goes, do you want to move home? And I was like, yeah. Well, at the time, I had nothing going for me, eh? Yep. I was yeah. going down. I was like, yeah, I was going down the wrong path. Anyway, getting in trouble all the time, mm. drinking alcohol and stuff, just 
partying all the time, man. Yeah. Stop drinking alcohol, it's nearly been a year now. True. Yeah. You can see our brother has a standard. He has a tight schedule, bro. Yeah. How has that impacted your life, bro? Like, how has it changed everything? Oh, uh, well, yeah, as soon as I moved home, he put me on all these courses. I yeah. got my um, wheels, tracks and rollers. Um, yeah, he had the business going. I jumped on that straight away. I, I'm the STMS now. True. Yeah, yeah brother. So I was just, just getting qualifications after qualifications, but I don't know. I just didn't expect to... Um, that was what it's about, eh? Mm, mm. Like, well, you have like a, um, what is it called? Like an image of who the Mong Mong yes. is, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yep. and then, yeah, once, once, um, yeah, I jumped on board. It was like a whole, a oh, totally different, um, what is it called? Image. Like, yeah, yeah we're all about mahi, working out, eating good, living healthy lives. That's crazy, brother, because the media have portrayed the mob to be negative. Yeah. You know, vicious, notorious. Yeah. You know, brother, where today you said blown my mind because I knew nothing. I only knew what the media said. Portrayed it as. And when I've come here, brother, I've spoken to you, I've sat with you, I've had a cry with you, I've trained with you. You are a far noble. You are a brotherhood yeah. that are out on a mission for change. For change, that's it. No matter what anyone says, you guys are role models for the next generation that come on. Yeah. Well, to, to me, I'm like a big role model to my little brother. Oh, yes. Because, like, when we, when he got, we were always together. Mm. Yeah, me and him got a tight ass bond, and, like, mm. yeah. And I just, he always looks up to me as a father figure because yep. he's never had yes. that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I always try, um, what is it called, like, role model what I want him to be. Lead by yeah, example, yeah, brother? Yeah, that's exactly that, my brother. Especially, um, seeing what my little brother's turned into now. Mm. Yeah, he's trying to pass me, he's never going to pass hey, me. Hey, my brother, <laughs> that's that brother who loved the way that, that sibling loved nah, yeah. bro. Nah, yeah. Nah, yeah. That's awesome, cool. bro. Always, he's by my side, that's, that's cool, that's... Thank you. No, bro. Because that story right there, bro, is what people need to hear. Not only in the community, not in within New Zealand, but worldwide, bro. Yeah, so, bro, congratulations, bro, man. So we just finished our 5Ks, one of our um, wheels that we laid down for ourselves, 5 kilometers for 5 days of the week, rain, hail or shine, so we just pumped that out, get the blood flowing, now we're about to get into some paired rounds, staying sharp, bro. We then sat down with Bronson to hear more about what he is doing and the struggles that he is facing. How has it been for you, brother, with the stigma of what people say you are, past and present? Mm. I, for me, I, I understand why we were viewed in certain ways from the, at, in the past, mm. because the actions of the past. Mm. But I think today we should be viewed of the actions of today. You know, and I've been doing good things, positive things, brother, not, not for any reason besides that I love my community, I love my family and my people. You know, I love, I'm Māori first and foremost, eh, mm. brother, you know, and so I, I see things a lot different. So I, I, I found out who I was, brother, when I was in jail, mm. you know, through connection to Te Ao Māori, mm -hmm. through, some, through some meditative practices, and when I found out who I was, I started to see the world for what it was as well. Mm. And then I started to see that um, it's time for change, brother. Mm. I started to see that it's time for change. And prior to me going to jail, my senior members were already trying to speak that into us. But my young mindset, mm. I thought, what are they on about? You know, what the f***? They're saying what they were doing. Mm. But as I went to jail and got around some of our, our senior members and our OG gangsters, um, that had been in jail since I was a kid, since mm. I was young. Mm. And telling me, you know, what they want for us as well, brother. So I was, a, I was fortunate for that bloody experience of going to jail, eh? 
you know, I was able to almost take a bit of a trip into the past yep. in a lot of ways, brother, yep. and get some wisdom yeah. from some real m Gs. Mm. Bro, and then come out here and see the, the world that I was a part of and, and see how fucking chaotic and disruptive that it was mm. and realise that things need to change. And then I had to equip myself and enhance myself to be the person that can lead that change, brother. And mm. that's what I've been doing, you know. And um, it's taken a while, you know. I got yeah. out, I was just a young member. Yeah. I was just a young member, but I knew what I needed to do, brother. Mm. I had a realisation in jail and I just, my whole purpose in life sort of lined up and that's when I started implementing positive changes yep. and just like yourself brother you know keeping a real authenticity mm. and integrity I was telling my our president and our senior members what I was going to do and over time I done it I done it and done it and then our mighty realized that you know I was Sort of fulfilling the desires that they had, eh? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, whilst yeah. they're old, yeah. whilst they're old, brother. Yeah, so, yeah. so they've supported me, and when I knew that I had their support, and when he put me in place as the captain, mm. that's when I knew it doesn't matter what anyone else says. Because yeah. I know a lot of the brothers still have the old mindset, mm. still want to keep things the way that they are. Yep. Yeah. But with the support of our of our rangatira, I knew I'm going all the way, brother. Beautiful. That's when I really got real about it. Yep. Yeah. That's when I started to. You know, I ran a rangatahi program mm. here. Brother, I got f extremely underfunded. Yep. And, and, and I was down there, everyone was just waiting for it to fail. Mm. I was down at the Marae with 12 kids, just me and my bros, mm. you know, expected to undo 30 years of, 30 years of trauma. Trauma, yep. In, in, a, in 13 weeks, brother, no support, but my family, mm. my bros, you know, the mob. There was money, my brothers who were coming down and helping out mm. where they can. For the first program, bro, we were eating like we were eating in jail. Porridge for breakfast, adding noodles to everything for our lunch and all that. Mm. And these young fellows are our future, and there was very little investment into our future. And then there was heaps of other things that I was doing around here, brother, to make the changes. Yep. And there's just there's lack of support, brother. I was getting a lot of verbal support, but that doesn't really do that much. Do you know, much. We, we, nothing, needed, yeah. we needed organisations to wrap around us, brother. And I and I know that we can really change the statistics here in Whitehall mm. if we get resourced and supported like other organisations would. Mm. You know, brother. It's <clears throat> I'm an outsider looking in, bro. I feel like you're still being judged from what's happened in the past, mm. from members of this community that are still stuck in the past. Mm. So they want change, yet they're not willing to change themselves. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest problem, brother, is they can see what you're doing. They know what you're doing, yet they're still stuck in their ways. How is one supposed to change when the organisations around them will not change? That must hit a nerve, brother. It does, brother, like, I, like with the traffic company that I got going. You know, an awesome guy from Manawatu, he got asked to bring his traffic company over to Hawke's Bay during the mm. cyclone in there. Mm. And so he's got that thought, he's like, why would I bring a Manawatu traffic company over to Hawke's Bay when I'd rather support a young organisation to come up here from Hawke's Bay? He heard about the good things that I'm doing, brother, and he mm. wanted to help. So he's invested 120, him and his business have invested 120,000 and to us starting our own traffic management company because he's seen there's a lot of work here. It's like, how can it not succeed? So he invested the capital. I got rounded the boys up. We got them qualified. I, we just made sure it happened, brother. They all got qualified. And all the work is going elsewhere. And it's wrong, brother, because we're tangata whenua here. Mm. How are we not entitled to a share of this work? They mm. tell us to get them, get jobs, get off the unemployment. Okay, we've created an opportunity to get jobs. Now what's the next issue? Oh, now you've got to find the work, but the work's there. You know? The work is right there, and that's what's annoying me, brother, yeah, is that brother. everyone knows the work is local, not only that. Both ways you head, there is mahi for days to be done. Yeah. And it annoys the f*** out of me that there is people here, brothers here, that are putting themselves out there. Mm. And it's still getting turned. Now, why that is happening is a question that needs to be asked. And I'm pointing straight down the barrel to the people that's watching this. Why aren't we supporting brothers out there?
that are trying to do the best, not only for themselves, for other young men, but for the community. A question needs to be asked. Anyone watching this, let's ask that question. Well, to be honest, brother, what's, you know how you said it hit in there? Mm. When I'm, through all the things that have happened, brother, and all the setbacks that I've gotten, I've realised that the best thing for me to do, because I'm out here trying to do all these positive initiatives, and then I've actually got to look after my kids, mm. you know, pay my rent, mm. got all these young fellas and all that, is to go hard into my businesses, brother, mm. and fund these things later on mm. myself, brother. Mm. You know, unless the, the people out there who actually are in positions to run these programs but don't have the know-how or the can-do to do mm. it, actually want to get real, eh, brother, and, and really want to make the changes that happen, then I'll, then I'll work alongside them, brother. Mm. You know, because we do want to address the meth issues, we do want to address the crime. Brother, like I, I had the police ring me up when there's things that happen around here, eh? mm. you know. And the, this is the funny thing, brother. They ring me and say, oh, and I, and when they ring me, they're on the payroll. Hey, they're on the payroll to, to give me a call and help me to address the issue, these issues. I'm not. Mm. Hey, but because I do want these changes to happen, uh, brother, we sort shit out before shit hits the fan, eh? Mm. And it doesn't happen all the time, but that's what we're trying to do, eh, brother? Mm. You know, because I understand that the war belongs to our community. Yep. You know, it, it belongs to, to everyone. Yep. And there are things that happen in the gang world, but we're putting things in place so that it stays there. Mm. It spills out into the streets. Who's accountable for that? Hey, let's get down the marae and sort mm. that shit out. You know, that sort of stuff. Because, you know, that stuff that happened in the, in the past, it needs to go. Yep. Because we're starting to realise, like, brother, my kids are my YA. Mm. And I look at my son and I'm like, hey, he doesn't need to deal with all this, yep. this stuff that really impacted my life, my yep. whole teenage years, brother. Yep. My whole thing was revolved around the coolest thing to do was hang out with the homies and hopefully to see some some of the enemy. Mm. You know, and a big gang and all that. And and gets uh, and that was the mindset, brother. Yep. It's, a, a, it's not easy out here, eh, brother? Oh, hell. That's what people don't understand is I'm like in a position where it, it seems that I'm going against the grain mm. in, the, in the mob. Eh? Yep. Because hey, what's he doing then and what we do and all this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in the community's eyes, they want me to fucking undo 30 years and, 30, and three fucking days, yep. you know, and 30 days sort of thing. Mm -hmm. you know, so I sort of got to, fuck, it's like dancing on the razor's edge, bro, you yep. know. I got to find that little bit of, bit of area where I can say, this is why we're fucking doing this. Mm. Hey, don't worry about what they're up to. Not like well, I've fucking held the type of meetings that have never happened here between mm. gangs, brother. Mm. You know, and just try new stuff. And in my in myself thinking, F this better go well, otherwise, mm. you know. So I've got to maintain my position within my brothers, eh, and that trust within my gang, mm. whilst moving us forward and building a bridge with people yeah. who don't trust us. Eh? Yeah. And the ones who don't trust us are expecting. A miracle? Yes, 100%. You yeah. know, hey, brother, so mm. people don't realise the position that we're in. It's unique, brother. Like, it's, I, there's no one laid a path out for me to follow and say, dude, yeah. this thing, we're blazing the trail forward because, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. because I, the outcome is, is worth it, brother, yep. you know, to see all our kids in Warrell thriving. What is the future for you and your chapter, my bro, moving forward? What would you like to see yourself, the crew, in the next three years? In the next three years, brother. So we own some land over there. Mm. We own our own land, brother. I actually want us to have our own little community on it. You know how we got this house and how the regime yep. is in this house? Yeah, 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 yeah. I want a community that's governed by Tikanga, brother. Oui. You know, a little community that's governed by Tikanga. We all wake up, we all train, we all respect. If we do have a wahine, mm. you know, we respect our wahine. Mm. Our kids come first and we don't do drugs, brother. Yes. You know, like... Uh, for me, brother, down they say get the drugs out of town. I want to get the f***ing vapes out of town too. You know, mm. The cigarettes and out, you know, like that's my mindset. Mm. But I understand that things take time. But like these young fellas, if they want to vape, they got to go out and that's why these days cars parked out the front. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Smoke. People turn up, smoke. Hey, bro, bro, smoke that stuff out there. Mm. I put these tikangas in place because this is my son's home. Mm. You know, brother, and, and, and imagine a community ran like that. Wow, bro. And because let's say that we did get the, the rehab going and we did get our boys off meth, that from there, they'll move into this little community yep. eh, brother, that's governed by Tikanga. And then yep. we can slowly bring their whanau. And, and then, I, bro, the way that I said, imagine if that, if, if Motivate Contractors become a, like a, a little QRS here in Wairau, mm. you know? 
And then all these fellas who go through our rehabs, we wouldn't know they have to worry about mahi because we'll be upskilling them during the kaupapa, getting them all their qualifications, then they can work on a traffic management, drive diggers, provide a f***ing stable income for their family. You know, we'll teach them about business. It takes putting people, our own people in front of our people mm. who are willing to make a change, but also put themselves out there to make change, brother. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we need to go back to our communities and find people like yourself, bro, that are trying to make a change and actually support. Mm. You know what I mean? Questions need to be asked within the community about why. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why even when we're doing f***ing what's right? You give us guidelines to go to, we do them. Why? Yeah. Why has the contracts been given to companies outside, well outside of the area? Yeah, bro. And still people are coming to the town when there's more than enough work to go around locally and nationally. Yeah. My brother, once again, from the bottom of my heart and my brother Mitch's heart, but most importantly, all the fine watching behind that camera, bro, thank you for opening up your doors to us. Appreciate bro, you, my yeah, bro. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Mm, oh. my brother. Appreciate you, my brother. Thank Much you, love, my bro. Brother.